What you're about to watch is a tutorial on how to beat the game without taking any damage. Feel free to use any of the strategies, but listen to detailed commentary before trying them on your own. Hello everybody, this is a no save no damage runoff. Resident Evil 2. On hard difficulty. This is Claire B scenario by the way. In the midst of the T virus outbreak in Raccoon City, Leon Kennedy succeeded in escaping from the city following his encounter with one of the only other survivors. A woman named Ada, a spy seeking the deadly G virus. However, Ada! Leon was not the sole survivor of the incident. A girl named Claire Redfield was in town on business of her own. She came to uncover the mysterious circumstances of her brother's disappearance. Chris Redfield, a member of the Star's Alpha Team. Only now her mission has become quite simple. Basic survival within the nightmare that was once Raccoon City. Hello? Is anyone here? Hello? Uh, hello? <gasps> Look, I'm sorry I bothered you, okay? Just don't come any closer. Are you listening? can't stay out here. Head to the police station. It'll be a lot safer. There! Buckle up. Okay. What's going on? I arrived in town. And the whole place went Great. insane! The radio's out! You're a cop, right? Yeah. First day on the job. Great, huh? Name's Leon Kennedy. Nice to meet you. Mine's Claire. Claire Redfield. I came to find my brother, Chris. Hey, could you open the glove? 
glove box? Sure. There's a gun inside. Better take it with you. Still in one piece. <gasps> that maniac's gonna ram us! So clearly, this is the PC version of the game by the way, so the first section of the street is just pretty straightforward, just kinda hack the cars uh, in order to avoid the zombies grab, right here I like to hack this wall, because that zombie will always trigger but after you pick up the key it's possible that he will be very close to the, to the door so try to not run too much after the, uh, after the camera change because it's possible he can launch to you and grab you. So hard difficulties and exclusive difficulty for the PC version of the game and the Dreamcast version of the game. But on the Dreamcast version of the game it doesn't say hard, it, it says nightmare. But both are the same. So right here I like to get close to the zombie and just lure him. Once he's very close to the corner of the stairs, just go around him and go upstairs. So, by the way, this is also the Japanese version of the game, that's why you can see the Japanese subtitles in the videos, in the cutscenes. But I will go more in depth about that later. So right now, we just hack this wall, like this one, and by hacking that wall, you'll always avoid the crows. Because they can body block you, and if they body block you, they will pick you, and they will inflict damage after that. So in order to not get, get stuck on their bodies, just hack that wall. So because this is hard difficulty and it's not possible to... Well, may maybe it's possible to defeat Mr. X, but we will use a lot of ammo and it's not worth it, so... We'll just go right here, use the safe lock, pick up the acid, acid rounds and get out and pick up the bulb. And go upstairs again, turn off the fire and trigger Mr. X. There's also hanging bullets in this body. So for that specific office, if you do things fast enough, you don't have to shoot any of the zombies. And as you can see, you can just pick up everything and leap without even worry about them. But you have to do it very precisely. Otherwise, they will be able to grab you. Because zombies on hard difficulty are also more aggressive. And sometimes they will go turbo and will start walking very, very fast, like kind of running. But on hard difficulty, I, I have to learn a lot of uh, dodges for Mr. X and um, for the leakers. And it's kind of mandatory because of the ammunition. Because also on hard difficulty, the games gives you less ammunition. So for example, on every grenade pickup, it will give you four grenades instead of six.
So again, that's the main reason we won't fight Mr. X in all the encounters. I'm pretty sure we will, we will only fight him once in the entire of the game. But anyway, stand up right on this pillar, turn around to the left and wait until he comes close to you. When he's very, very close to you, go to the, to the other wall. But like pressing the up and left the pad button, and by doing that you will go, you will get close to the camera, so you will go to the to Kred's right. And Mr. X will always try to punch, and he will always miss because you do that that, that movement, that specific movement. So there's more detail about that dodge, and I will explain that later because there's one more dodge right here. So after you pick up this this key card, the liquor will drop down the the window. Just run forward and go directly to the door. On a very, very rare occasion, that leaker won't leak and he will attack. But if you are fast enough and you are hugging the left side of that room, uh, the leaker won't be able to inflict damage. So I was telling you about that dodge. So that dodge, you have to go to that specific pillar that I told you, and then you have to rotate to the right. Like to Claire's right. And then stand up like putting your back to the pillar like you saw it. Then Mr. X will start walking very slowly and after the third step of Mr. X, you have to press the up and left dip and button and the run button and you will go to the other wall but you will be far away from Mr. X punch. Because if you press the up and right dip and button, you will go to the other wall of course or even if you just press the up dip and button. Of course you will get, uh, you will go to the other wall but Mr. X will be able to punch you. So it's very, very important that you press the left dip button as well. It's very, very consistent as long as you time it correctly. But yeah, I think that's a more detailed commentary about that dodge. That is not very seen on, on the runs, even on speedruns. Because usually speedrunners uh, do not get close to the pillar or do not... Uh, put their backs on the pillar like they rotate their backs to Mr. X if you know what I mean and doing that is also consistent but it's harder it's a harder way to perform the dodge by doing that so right here I kill the zombies upstairs so I can use the unicorn medallion the unicorn medallion it's it's mandatory with Claire it's not mandatory with Leon and it's mainly because the crank it's oh no sorry the, I think the lighter it's on that office and clear to be but anyway for these zombies just run straight it's not it's not necessary to kill them you can kill them if you want I don't really recommend it because unfortunately Claire doesn't have the upgrade for her handgun so in order to kill zombies is very very it's very slow unlike Leon's Leon's runs and also is a little more risky because of that so with Claude it's kind of mandatory to learn how to quick shot in this game but about the quick shot I will go more in detail about that later I will even left uh, detailed tutorial video on how to quick shot in this game in the description below because I think it's kinda hard to learn it just by watching it and just by listening what I'm going to say so on that specific video video I will show the inputs of my controller so it will be an easier way to learn the quick shot but anyway right here equip the the grenade launcher I also save the the acid rounds before so, and just shoot to this zombie it's not necessary to shoot the other zombie but in order to not aggro the other zombie you have to get close to the left before you start shooting so you will never aggro the zombie on the right because if you just immediately start shooting after you get out of the the operation room the zombie on the right will aggro So in my opinion, I think that Claire B on hard difficulty is the hardest run you can make on Resident Evil 2 Classic. And it's mainly because the 
kind of weapons and kind of ammunition the game gives you that makes the run harder. So yeah, definitely Clore B is the hardest one. Leon! It's good to see you're still among the living. It looks like we're not gonna find your brother here after all. There's no reason for us to stay any longer than necessary. Let's split up, look for any survivors, and get out of here. Right. One last thing. Here's a radio. Take it. That way we can keep in touch if anything happens. So because you retrieved the first main weapon in the in the hallway, or in the main in the main room of the R, of the RPD, you can retrieve the bow gun on the on this locker. But yeah, after picking up the key and after picking up the grenade launcher, you can just leave. Also, ignore Sherry, she will be fine, don't worry about her. Because if you go right now to the other room, there will be a lot of zombies and it's not worth it. Because they will be already stand, stand up. It's not like an... It's not like they will be eating a zombie. And also, it's not worth it to visit the library right now, because if you visit the library right now, there will be zombies in the basement. And in the in the hallway, in the first floor. So in order to not trigger those zombies in the base scenarios, you have to visit the library at the end of the RPD section. So you cannot worry about that. Unless you have a... Uh, a save file of the A scenario where you use the cables in the windows. But because this is the run that I make with Leon A, I didn't use the cables on, the, like, on Leon A, so that's the main reason I don't go to the library. So right here, save the lighter, save both gems. And maybe you're wondering that my item management is not really good, and I will visit the item boxes later. Like, I'm not gonna going to be able to pick up everything, I think. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to pick everything, yeah, that's on Clary. But I need the green launcher, the bowgun, the bows, and the, and the handgun for this section. So when you enter this section, equip the bowgun and start shooting the zombie on the right until he falls on. He usually takes four shots of the bowgun, sometimes five. Do not shoot him with the handgun, do not shoot him with the grenade launcher. Because if you shoot them with both of those weapons, it's possible that he will launch to you. Because Zombies and Resident Evil Classic has a very annoying animation. And uh, that's when you inflict them damage, it's possible they will launch to, to your feet when they are very... on a very long distance from you. Fortunately, that's the... this is the only game that Zombies has that animation. That, anim that animation doesn't exist on Resident Evil 1 Classic or Resident Evil 3. But it's very, very annoying, so... If a zombie is getting close to you, the best thing you can do is... Take a lot of distance between you and the zombie. Just in case it launches to you. And as you can see in this office, for the other zombies, just start killing them with the, with the handgun. If by any chance they get very, very close to you, use the bowgun. It's a backup strat. Always wait for a zombie to start bleeding on the floor, that means they are, they are completely dead. Because sometimes they faint dead. And they will grab your feet if they are not bleeding on the floor. Also, if a zombie starts crawling on the floor, it means they are 0 HP, so you can reset the room and the zombie will be gone. It's another very annoying animation that... It's also on other Resident Evil games, not only on this one. But if you kill Marvin in the, in the A scenario, like I did on Leon A, you don't have to, you don't have to kill him in the B, in the B scenario. So by the way, when you play Leon A, the B scenario it's Claire B, and vice versa on Claire A, the B scenario is Leon B. So right here, just run forward, go directly to the to the blue door, then quick turn, re-enter this hallway, 
and then wait until that specific zombie that is very close to the to the to the telephone cabin get close to you and then you can just go around all of them and right here just lure the zombies as best as you can if you lure them correctly you will use the grenade launcher and you will kill a lot of them with just three grenade rounds you can use four of four of the grenade rounds if you want i like to use three i think i will use the four one as well but i will i will wait until they get close to me so maybe you you saw it but one zombie was crawling that's the, that, the animation i told you that zombie is already zero hp but he, he has that crawling animation that is very annoying and can grab your feet but if i reset the room that zombie will be gone but there are some other zombies that i didn't kill and also if you reset the room the hp values of the zombies that are not zero will reset so that's the main reason i didn't reset the room for that zombie that was crawling but I I had a very good explosive rounds shoot shots. That zombie on the right is is still alive, so that's why. But because he's crawling, I can just go. I can get out of the room, and he's already gone. When I come back, it's not necessary to come back right now. So I will just go to the second floor. But yeah, that's the main idea for that hallway. I think that hallway is one one of the main. A more complex sections in the in this run in Clarvis scenario but the dodges I did at the beginning of the hallway are very very consistent so right here I will pick up both gems I will leave the bow the bow gun the bows the bow gun excuse me and pick up both gems But you have to remember that the liquor is still in this room, so we will just play with him the green green light, red light game. And it's just by doing this. You will get close to the left, and when he elevates his torso, you have to stop. That's the red light. When he's going down to the floor again, that's the green light, and you can start moving. But if he elevates his torso again, that's the red light, so you have to stop. And it's just about that. You have to play with him, that's his AI. Because when he's elevating his torso, he's sensing you, so any movement that you do when he's on that specific animation will trigger his aggro, and he will go after you, even if, if you just aim. But when he's not elevating his torso, the only thing that will aggro him are running and shooting him. But if you continue walking, he won't aggro. So it's just about playing that game. That little game you can force that animation if you press the run and up the pad button just once and he will he will be forced to do that, that animation because he will hear you as you can see i i force that animation right there and when he's going down to the floor i will do it again i think one more time or i will just go directly to the door yeah one more time and now we will go directly to the door running because when he's falling down to the floor when he's getting out of that elevating torso animation he cannot uh, perform an out attack or he cannot start running because he's committed to end that animation before doing anything else oh i'm terribly sorry <laughs> i thought you were another one of those zombies are you Chief Irons? Yes, that's me. And just who are you? No, don't bother telling me. It makes no difference. You'll end up just like all the others. That's the mayor's daughter. I was told to look after her. But I failed miserably. Just look at her. She was a true beauty. Her skin nothing short of perfection. But it will soon putrefy and she will turn into a zombie within the hour like all the others. There must be some way to stop it. In a manner of speaking, there is. 
either by putting a bullet through her brain, or by decapitating her completely. And to think that taxidermy used to be my hobby. But no longer. Please. I'd really like to be alone now. So right now it's just a bunch of cutscenes. I will take advantage and explain you a little about the differences between the Japanese and North American version. So in the Japanese version there are less enemies. And the zombies patterns are different. Like slightly different. It's not a really big difference. Also the HP values are different. But not on all enemies. Wait. Let me go. Easy, easy there. I'm not a zombie. You're safe now. <laughs> My name's Claire. What's yours? Sherry. Do you know where your parents are? They both work at the Umbrella Chemical Plant. Near the city limits. The chemical plant? Then what are you doing here? My mom called and told me to go to the police station because it was too dangerous to stay at home. From the look of things, I'd say she was probably right. But it's dangerous here as well. You'd better come with me. But there's something out there. I don't know what it is. But I saw it. Much larger than any of those zombies. And it's coming after me! What was that? That's what I was telling you about! It's here! Sherry, wait! But the general idea is that also hang a bullets in that uh, in that box. But uh, I, as I was telling you, the general idea that people has that the North American version is the hardest version of the game. And it's true in some kind of... It's kind of true, but I don't think so. I don't really think that. In my opinion, the North American version is just like a more tedious version of the game. Because there are more enemies and you only need to pick up more ammunition. And it's just about that. It's not really like a hardest version of the game. Also, I think I didn't mention that this, but in the PC version of the game you can skip the door animations just by pressing the comfort button, but it's not like in Resident Evil 1 Classic that you can press it immediately. You have to wait a little, like, uh, 2 seconds, and then you can press the comfort button and you can skip the door animation. So right here there's a dog, shoot him, get close to him, aim down and continue shooting without stopping, and you will kill the dog. Always remember to reload your handgun before you enter this hallway. Because if you are out of ammunition and you start reloading like I'm doing it right now, it's, it's not bueno because maybe you will aim down and the dog will, the dog's hitbox won't be on the floor and he will you will miss the shot and he will jump to you and he will bite you. So if that happens, just aim directly, do not aim down. Wait until the dogs fully stand up and do not reload with the animation. Always reload your weapons on the on the menu. Also dogs in this in this part. Just get close to the call. Turn around, aim, shoot two times, and then continue shooting. But always wait until the dogs fully stand up. Because remember when the dogs are on the floor, their hitbox are on the floor, so if you aim directly you won't shoot them. You have to wait until they fully stand up before you can start shooting. Also, when they, the dogs are landing at the, at the beginning of this section, you have to wait until they fully land to the floor because that's when they their hitboxes are are available. Because if you shoot on the landing animation, you will miss the shot, and maybe the, after that they will jump and they will bite you. So on Resident Evil 2 Classic hard difficulty, there's also crit chance. You can decapitate the enemies, the zombies and the dogs. Like, I think it's 10% of crit chance of decapitating enemies. With the zombies it's very... It's very noticeable because you will hear the explosion of their heads. Sherry, I've been looking everywhere for you. I was so worried. 
We've got to go now, honey, okay? If we stay here, that monster will find us. Let's go. No! I won't! What's the matter? <laughs> Don't you trust me? It's not that, Claire. It's because of my daddy. He's over there. I heard him call my name. Daddy must have been attacked by the monsters. I have to help him. Wait, Sherry. Don't go alone. Sherry! Sherry! But the creature with the dogs is not very noticeable because if you are not watching the dog, you will creep shot them, but they won't scream, they won't do any noise, so... Sometimes you won't be able to know if you creep shot the dog or not, if they are not on the camera. But for those zombies, that dodge is very consistent. Like, just hug the fence, go around the corner, and then just go around the third zombie. I come here because there are explosive rounds. I never come here in clear A scenario because instead of zombies there are dogs, so... I'm not really sure it's like possible to dodge all the dogs without getting damaged with Sherry because Sherry is very very slow. Like it's possible to dodge one, one dog of course, but dodge two dogs, even three, I don't, I don't think so. And like dogs are more random than zombies. Like the worst thing that can happen to you there with the zombies is that the zombie will be very close to the fence and he will body block you before you can go around the corner. It happened to me once on like the 10 times I tried this run or more. Or at least the 10 or 20 times I tried that specific section. So on the way out is just about hugging the the right side of this part. So because zombies cannot grab Sherry because she's very tiny, they will always vomit. Zombies won't grab Sherry. Claire! Are you there? Sherry, are you okay? Did you find your dad? Yes, I'm okay. But I couldn't find him. But I did find something else for you. Here! Here's another! Thanks, sweetie. Now why don't you come over here? I want you to stay with me. Claire! I can't reach the ventilation hole anymore! But don't worry, I'll find another way. I can take care of myself! Wait! Sherry, come back! Sherry! Sherry! Do you read me, Claire? We now have access to the back of the parking lot. Got it. I'm getting out of here and heading to the sewer. Can you meet me there? I'm on my way. So we pick up the travel key, the explosive rounds. And then we will go to this save room and make some item management. I didn't do it. I didn't do it before because it wasn't necessary, but right now it's necessary. So pick up the acid rounds, pick up the great launcher, save everything except the bo both of the keys and just go with, with that. It's the only thing you need. Or maybe, maybe not. Oh yeah, I forget about the lighter. Yeah, the lighter is very important because there's a puzzle. Like the last puzzle, you will use the lighter. So because this is a clear B scenario, you have to go to the garage. Where Leon encounters Ada. And the liquors will be on the mortuary. It's not necessary to pick up that, that key card, but we will just use the key 
so we will be able to discard that key later in the game. But it's not necessary to pick up the, the key card on the mortuary. Also for these dogs, just run straight, run forward. Believe it or not, we'll always avoid the dogs just by doing that and on the way out it's the same. Just run forward. So right here, you get close to the camera change, equip the grenade launcher, shoot one as it round. When you enter to this room, as soon as you enter, aim and shoot two times. Do not do anything else. You will always kill both dogs with just by doing that. Thankfully, on hard difficulty, dogs die with just one acid round, so it's 100% consistent. After you pick up the crown, you can leap. It's the only thing you need on this section. And as you can see on these dogs, it's just about running, running forward. And just go directly to the door. So the mortuary room only has the key card, and that will be give you access to one room on this hallway. That will give you the chance to pick up between a side pack or a machine gun. But I think it's hard. It's really hard to pick up the key card, and even more on hard difficulty. So not really worth it. It's not like those things will give you very important things in the game. Not even with Leon. I think the only time I pick up was on Clare. But that was because in Clare the liquor is on the hallway, it's not in the mortuary room. But anyway, as it rounds on those... On that room. In order to avoid the zombies right here, just get close to the side of the, of the office. Always hack that wall because that zombie on the floor is alive, uh, so he can grab your feet. If you pass around his, his head. And I already cleaned this hallway, so I don't have to worry about any any zombies. Also in the visionaries there are no zombies here. So you can just go straight. The liquor won't uh, destroy the window right here. He will only destroy the window if you pick up the 8 spray. If you don't pick up the 8 spray, he won't destroy the window. In the B scenario. In the A scenario, he will always destroy the window after you pick up the, the stone. Also, there's no liquor right here on Kirby. So you just light up with the lighter and the, the solution is 12, 13, 11 for this puzzle. And then you can pick up the chair and leave the room. Nothing really dangerous to worry about. Or maybe there's something dangerous because Mr. X will boost through the, the wall and you have to run and go directly to the chair and leave the room. But it's okay, it's not really it's not really dangerous because Mr. X is low, so. But he will appear again right here. So what you have to do is you stop here and you have to hug this wall. Like this wall. And start running and hugging the wall. And by doing that you will always avoid Mr. X punching. Because he has to rotate before he can try to punch you. It's like Mr. X AI it's forced to uh, watch you directly, maybe. And then he can start throwing punches or do anything else. And because he was like facing the wall, that's the main reason he wasn't able to attack me immediately and he has to rotate. So for this leaker, also play the red light and green light game. When he's falling down to the floor, and as you can see, I can start running. And he has a delay before he can start jumping or trying to attack or start running. And that's perfect perfect timing you have to just go around him and leap the hallway so those are the zombies that I told you at the beginning of the run that can give can be a problem if you visit the library at the beginning of the of the game in the B scenarios also, there's no liquor in this hallway with Cler on Clarby. On Clarby, there's a... Uh, sorry, not zombie, a liquor. Well, on Clarby, there isn't a liquor, so... Nothing to worry about. At least for now. So, use the GR. The secret... The secret door will open and you can pick up the... 
the last part of the bluestone, like the second one. And you can go to directly to the chief's iron's office. Like, just go directly. But here comes Spider-Man. No, I'm joking, it's just Mr. X. So what you have to do is turn around, go to this spe specific spot and just stand up right there. And when he's very close to you, you have to do the same as I did it at the beginning of the game. So you have to go to that specific spot, put your back on the fence, and when Mr. X is very close to you, you have to press the up and left D-pad button. And by doing that, you will always go to the other side of the hallway, he will miss the punch, and then you can go around him. It's 100% because by, by the way, as long as you time it correctly, also. Like on the first encounter with Mr. X. But you are kind of forced to do that, because that hallway is very small, so even if you want to defeat him, I think it's not possible. And even if it's possible, you will have to use all the... or a lot of acid rounds, and you need acid rounds for the first boss encounter next. Like literally in 5 minutes. So you get close to the leaker and I will do the same. I, I will press the up and run the pad button just once, in order to force him that, to that animation. And when I'm very close to him, when he's lowering his torso, I can just run around him and leap. Like it's just by forcing him to do that animation and playing with him the green light and red light game. Once you get it, it's very fun to do it. And it's not very complex. So for the last boss, sorry, for the first boss encounter, you need eight acid rounds. Right now I have nine, but thankfully there are four uh, before the boss fight. Sherry, you're okay. Also on the clear clear B scenario, you won't fight the G embryo, so you don't have to worry about babies. So it's kind of impossible to miss an acid round, unless you do, you don't aim correctly, but you have auto aim, so I think it's not possible to to, to not aim correctly. I'm going down there. Stay here and wait for me, okay? made it this far. Not bad, girl. But I'm not letting anyone leave my town. Everyone's gonna die. Calm down, Chief. What happened? Shut up! You couldn't possibly understand what's happened. Those monsters from Umbrella have destroyed my beautiful town. How could they do that to me after everything I've done for them? So it's true. You have been working with Umbrella. Then you must know about the G-Virus. What is it? Tell me! If you must know, it's the agent that can turn humans into the ultimate bio-weapons. Superior to the T-Virus in every way! Dr. William Birkin is the genius behind the project. William Birkin? I'm sure you've already seen his little girl running around here somewhere. Sherry, isn't it? In case you haven't already figured it out. The monster that's been tearing my precinct apart is yet another product of the G-Virus. An ultimate bio -women. Umbrella must be trying to cover its tracks. But if I have to go, I'm going to take you with me! What the... So 
So, the repeated chief irons, don't worry about it. I didn't pick up the acid rounds because I have nine, so it's completely fine. I only need eight. Well, of course, reload your grenade launcher before you trigger the cutscene. So, in the B scenarios, you will fight against G1 instead of the G embryo or the G adult. So as soon as the cutscene ends, turn around, go to the end of the of this part, like on the side of the ladder and start shooting eight times. Start counting. After the eighth shot, just go to the ladder and go upside. You will know by two things when Birkin is dead. When he swings his bar, his metal bar, and also when the music stops. Of course he didn't wait until he swings his metal bar because it was possible that he would hit me because he was very close to me and that will inflict damage even, even when he's 0 HP already. So that's why I just go up the ladder. He's already dead so don't worry. If by any chance you didn't kill him because maybe you just shoot 7 times, this cutscene won't trigger. And that means Birkin is not dead. Develop the G virus is actually her father. What's wrong, Claire? It's nothing. But I think I found a way out of here. We should be able to find some place safe if we can just make it out of town. But... Don't worry, I'll protect you. I promise. But you have to make sure you don't leave my side. So you need to take into consideration something very important with Sherry. Because she's a slower... You need to wait for her some of the times, otherwise she will crouch and you will, you will have to go back to her and then you will be able to continue. So that's the main reason I stop on some specific spots, just to wait for her. So it's kinda interesting how Sherry do doesn't say anything about the half body of Chief Irons. She didn't even scare her about it. Tough kid. Kids this day, so over desensitized. Desensitized. <laughs> I don't know how to say that word, man. Like, they are done not sensible. Freaking TV. So it's desensitized. I just search it on Google right now. <laughs> really hard word. But anyway, as you can see, there is no second section with Sherry. It's directly with Claire. But behind this door, there's a ladder, and below the ladder, there are explosive rounds and bows. Try to hug the walls, just to not aggro the zombie. Because if you aggro him, maybe he will be he will grab you on the camera change after you pick up the explosive rounds. But that's the only thing you need here, so you can go up the ladder and continue with the game. But before that you also need to pick up the bulb in the item box, so we will make some item management before we can continue. So just leave the explosive rounds, leave the bows and pick up the bulb. You're bleeding. I, I I ran into this woman who is in trouble. Her name's Ada. Right after that, someone tried to kill me. Nearly succeeded, too. Ada went after the sniper, but 
I'm worried about her. You gotta find her before... before something happens. But you've been shot. I'll be okay. It's Ada I'm worried about. So, right uh, on the side of the UBCS soldiers, there are flame rounds. Oh no, sorry, this is the B scenario. There is. Oh yeah, there are flame rounds and also the silver medallion. Yeah, yeah. So, I like to have this wall in order to be careful about that spider that is trying to attack me on the other wall. The spider on the ceiling is not a, it's not a threat as long as you continue running. Right here, run forward and then get close to this wall. The worst case scenario is that one spider wind will be in this conduct and the spider will throw you acid when you are going up. A what the fuck moment like what the fuck is Annette doing? <laughs> are you so funny? Right? What happened? Get away from me. You just want my husband's key sample, don't you? But no one will take that away from me. No one. Husband? Then you must be Annette. Huh? How did you? We don't have time for that. Sherry is lost somewhere in the sewer system. I have to find her. What? I told her to go to the police building. Why is she here? Now Sherry and the key sample are both in danger. Uh. What did she mean by that? Does Sherry have the key sample? So use the bulb to make the bridge fall down and you need to use it again to make the bridge going up. But on the side. Flame rounds on the side of the type rider. Pretty handful. So, because we already killed the alligator with Leon, we won't encounter the alligator in the B scenario. It's like everything, or at least some of the things that you make in the in the A scenario, uh, shows on the B scenario. Like, for example, the alligator kill. So, the, once you pick up the golden emblem, or the golden medallion. The spiders will be replaced by zombies. The spiders on the first section. The spiders on the sec second section are still in the same place. So this is the last time we use the bulb. And on this air conduct there are roaches. But if, are, if, if the roaches grab you, that doesn't count as damage. But if several of them grabs you at, one, uh, at the same time. Uh, they can insta instantly kill you. So if they grab you, just shake your body. Press the up and down the button in order to shake them off. But they don't inflict damage. They will only insta kill you if a lot of them grab you, like I think five of them grab you at the same time. Something like that. So right here, you just hide the left side of this section. Go directly to the emblems and put them. Thankfully, in the cutscene, Claire will rotate directly to the door, so you can just start running forward in, if by any chance a uh, spider is very close to you. Pretty scary part.
okay. Sherry, did your mom give you something called G-Virus? Either a vial or a test tube? G-Virus? I've never heard of anything like that before. Are you absolutely sure? If you give it to me, I'll hold on to it for safekeeping. But I really don't have anything. It's the truth. But why would her mom say something like that? So there's a hiding key right here that will open a locker in the laboratory and it's very helpful with, with Claire. So right here you just run directly to this camera chain, chain and shoot a flame round. Sometimes it will take you two flame rounds to kill that zombie and there are two zombies around the corner so as soon as you arrive to the corner and to the camera chain, shoot two times, even three times, it depends of if the zombies are dead or not. There's another zombie that is coming from the other side. So just go and pick up the the electric gun that I forget the name. Oh my god, I forget the name of that gun. It's an electric gun, but anyway, just kill the zombies with the flame rounds. It's completely fine. Always wait for Sherry. I'm not entirely sure if a zombie can grab Sherry's legs. I don't think so. Never test it. But anyway, right here, run to this part. Wait until the zombie get close to each other and shoot a flame round. Thankfully, we, you will kill three of them with just one flame round, but one's still alive, so I will equip the electric gun. I will start shooting, but... Unfortunately, this electric gun has a lot of recoil, so it will make you go back like a lot, and sometimes it will make you change the camera because of that recoil. But I killed the third zombie, and the fourth zombie sometimes will die with just one flame round, like in this occasion, and there are only four zombies. Like, there's a fifth one on the other side, but it's not necessary to go there because if there's only herbs, so not necessary to go there. Sherry, wait here. I'm going to check it out by myself. Okay, I'll wait here, but hurry back. So now I remember the name of that weapon is the, the spark shot. So save the bulb on the dead box, pick up the flame rounds on the acid rounds. It's very important that you don't use acid rounds on the zombies. And it's because there's another encounter with Mr. X right now, so you need the acid rounds for that encounter. This will be the only time on hard difficulty that we will be that we will defeat Mr. X with Claire. So after you pick up the key, do not trigger the cutscene. Just go backwards like Michael Jackson when Mr. X appears behind you. Get close to the fence, shoot him two times, then take a space between you and Mr. X again, and then shoot two times again, and then they get close to these monitors and shoot two times again. Mr. X will always uh, fall down on the sixth acid round, unless you miss one shot, because maybe Mr. X was on the corner and you shoot too early. But for this strat, it's very important that you don't trigger the cutscene, otherwise Mr. X will be much more closer to you because of the cutscene of the on the camera, you know. So very important to not trigger the cutscene. Okay, Sherry, let's go. So for the next box boss fight, I test a lot of strats with different weapons. And I realized that, that the best weapon you can use with Claire for this boss is the, the spark shot. Of course you can defeat this boss with flame rounds, but it will take you a lot of flame rounds. Uh, it's not worth it because you need those flame rounds later in the game. So it's just better to kill this boss with the spark shot. Thankfully with the spark shot you can perform the quick shot. So you can cancel the recoil of the spark shot if you perform it correctly and that will give you a lot of advantage in the fight. But even if you don't use the quick shot, it's also possible to kill this boss fight. It will only take you more time. And you will be in a little... What was that? 
more risky positions because of that sometimes. And I will explain that in depth later, like after the boss fight. Wait here. I'll go and see what it was. So first I like to pick up the flame rounds that are behind the bathroom. I won't use it in the fight, but I just like to pick it up right now. So in the B scenarios you fight G3, not G4, not G2, excuse me. So the cutting ends just aim and shoot and try to quick shot. That's a quick shot with the spark shot, as you can see I shoot very very fast. There's also the the pull back that the that the weapon gives you, but there's no recoil as you can see. So when you hear that uh, G3 start jumping to the train, you, you you have to start running forward on the side that you have more space. So just by doing that you won't be like stuck on one side and maybe you will be out of space and G3 will be able to tag you. So that's why I always run after he starts jumping to the train. Like he will always try to jump after the third or fourth shot with the spark shot. That's the second phase of the boss when he raises his arms. He's a little slower by them when he does that. But that means that he's uh, like half HP of dying so. The main goal is that do not uh, let him get close to you, otherwise he will attack you and he has a really disgusting range, so... And he's done. So I told you that it's a little more risky to this fight without the quick shot, and that's because with the recoil that the spark shot gives you, without the recoil. Sometimes G3 will jump to the train, and because of the recoil you won't have enough time to start running immediately after that. And sometimes you will, like, cut your way. You keep it. Just because of I'm the sure recoil. Keep you safe. So it's better if you learn the quick shot. It's not really complex to learn the quick shot. Thanks, Claire. And as I told you at the beginning of the game. Even though I'm an only child, neither of my parents ever spent much time with me because of their work. But now that you're with me, I finally have someone to rely upon. Sherry. Sorry, did you hear the cutscene? So as I was telling you, as I told you at the beginning of the run, I will leave a tutorial video on how to perform the quick shot in the description below. So go check it out if you want to learn it. It's not really complex and it feels really good when you learn it and when you know how to pull it off. So right now it comes like the part that I lost 90% of my runs. And maybe you think that the parts that I already beat are the hardest ones, are the more, most complex. And that, that's true, those parts are the most complex parts of the game, or of the run. But I lost many runs right on this section because, to be honest, I just messed up. And sometimes I have a really, really weird RNG and bad RNG that almost never happened that sometimes the leakers won't get stung with, the, with an explosive round or with, a, with an acid round. But now that I think about it, it's not like a really weird RNG, it's just about timing. I will explain to you right now how that works. So I like to push the box right now, just to not push it later. Because you will go come back to this place after the laboratory section of the game. So you can push it right now or later. That's up to you. So make sure you, uh, that you equip the 
the grenade launcher with explosive rounds before you enter to this section. So just run straight, hug this wall, aim and shoot. You will always stun the leaker and wait until he fully stand up and then shoot again. Do not shoot early, because if you shoot early before he stand up, uh, he won't get stunned with the explosive round. And of course he will attack you because he's very very close to you. And for the second one, most of the time he will be very far away from you, so you can shoot him with acid rounds. And it's the same rule, you have to wait until the leaker fully stand up and then shoot again, otherwise he won't get stunned with the, with the grenade. And if by any chance the second one is very close to you, use explosive rounds, do not use uh, acid rounds. Because you have to keep this in, in mind. The explosive rounds has like... Uh, it, the, the way it, it shot is different. It doesn't go perpendicular like the flame round and like the acid round. So that's why it's your best weapon when the enemy is very very close to you. And even more with leakers because leakers are like on the floor, right? So the explosive rounds are a bit the best weapon you can have against leakers when they are very close to you. When they are not very close to you, the best the best kind of grenades you can have against leakers are the acid rounds. But even when they are far away, the explosive rounds are are good enough. Because the good thing about the explosive rounds is that it will always stagger leakers, no matter what. So right here I like to lure the zombie on the left to the right to, so I can shoot uh, both of them with one flame round and then terminate the second one with the spark shot. But right there they are very close to me so I'm just gonna use flame rounds. If by any chance one is in the floor I recommend you to reset the room, like crawling on the floor I mean. Right there I'm using the auto aim in my advantage to know if a zombie is still alive, but clearly it's aiming to the last zombie that is around the corner. I like to kill him with spark shot because just by doing that I can save some ammo. And with the spark shot it's below 10% just use flame round or an acid round or an explosive round doesn't matter. Then I like to enter to this uh, door to this room because right here there are hang and bullets and also flame rounds. And maybe you're wondering why I'm picking up hang and bullets. Because the handgun will be useful to the, uh, at the end of the game. And I, you will know why. So a little stop to the item box, save the handgun bullets, pick up the bowgun and the bows. It will be necessary now. It's mainly because one room, one specific room with zombies that will be in a lot of my runs as well. Because there's one specific zombie that can be a pain in the ass. But anyway, right now it's just about going to the to the freeze room, pick up that item, freezing it, and using it on the generator to open the other or to power up the uh, the other bridges. So maybe you saw my clear A, no save, no damage, hard difficulty run. And on that specific run, I use the BOW gas. And guess what? The BOW gas is not an exclusive for. Code Veronica, it's also available here, but not as a weapon. Not as a munition, to be exact. So in this game, in the laboratory, you can use the BOW gas and it will it will weak the, all the enemies in the laboratory. Except the bosses, of course. And it's very, very useful with Claire, but with Leon it's not, because Leon has a very overpowered weapons. And also when you use the BOW gas, it will affect the, the other scenario. But because it's the B scenario, it doesn't matter, right? Because you cannot play another scenario with the B scenario. The B scenario is the last one. But in the A scenario, when you use the BOW gas, the enemies are stronger on Leon B, for example. Or if you use the BOW gas on Leon A, the enemies will be stronger on Claire B. But anyway, the, the way you do it is you have to go to the end of this hallway, enter to this specific room. There's also bows on this locker. And... Oh, I won't use the BOW gas. Damn, dude. Well, never mind. <laughs> Just forget about everything I told you. <laughs> Activate the, the button, rotate to the left, and just hack this wall and go around the IB zombies. It's 100% consistent that way to avoid them. So right here I'm making sure that I have the explosive rounds equipped. That's very, very important because there are some super leakers right now. 
So when he falls down from the ceiling, aim and shoot. But always wait until he fully lands from the ceiling. Do not shoot very early. He will take between two and three explosive rounds and equip the acid rounds. And try to aim directly to the, to the liquor is behind the one that you already killed. And he will die with sometimes one acid round. Max three. Like the mo most of the time with two acid rounds. But there's a third super liquor. And I will lure him just by doing the same. How I force the, the animation of the liquors in the RPD. But right there I miss the shot. I'm trying to aim correctly. I just equip the explosive rounds just in case. But I don't want to use those explosive rounds. So I'm just gonna use the flame rounds. When he's getting... When he's getting very close to me and we use the explosive rounds. So that's why I didn't want to use explosive rounds when he was far away from me. Because maybe I will miss the shot and I will only have one explosive rounds. And that won't be enough to kill him when he will be very close to me. So that's why I use a flame round. And also it's very important that you save those two acid rounds. Very, very important. Because those two acid rounds will be useful for the super tyrant fight. So right here I like to pick up the handgun and all the bullets. So this is the specific spot I told you that is very annoying. There's a zombie that on a, on a place that he can easily grab you. He's just annoying so what I like to do is I equip the bow gun and when I see him I start shooting him. I just shoot him until he dies. Do not hesitate. Because before I used to shoot him a flame round, but remember this hard difficulty and sometimes he didn't die or sometimes he like throw directly to my feet with thing in death and then instantly grab my feet. So that's why I, I just say fuck it and I started using the ball gun because it's the safest weapon that you can have against zombies when they are close to you. And right here I'm trying to lure in the zombies because I don't want to enter because I'm very scared. But then I decided to use the handgun. But I'm not shooting any of them, so I will just go YOLO and I will enter. Like I'm doing that part very very safe. So I will just go YOLO. I will just lure all the zombies right here and start shooting flame rounds. So... If you don't see the zombies, try to use the handgun. Uh, you can like rotate to the left or to the right and use the auto aim and that will tell you if a zombie is still alive or not. So that's a crit shot. I think this is the first crit shot in this run. I never get a crit shot on a zombie. If I remember correctly. But I already killed all the zombies because the auto aim didn't rotate me immediately to the zombies side. So I'm completely fine to go. So right now I'm kind of worried because I need 11 explosive rounds for the last boss fight G5. And there's only 8 in this locker. But thankfully, this strat works also with other kinds of ammunition. And I'm gonna find flame rounds. Or I'm not gonna find flame rounds? I can't remember correctly, to be honest. But anyway, save the handgun, save the handgun bullets. You need two spaces because... Annette! Where's Sherry? But I asked her and she's never even heard of the G-Virus before. Which room? Tell me! Sherry! No! Annette! The samples inside the pendant Sherry's wearing. So you need two spaces because you will pick one key on Annette's body later and one key in the in the train. But I think you don't need those spaces because you will have a free space. For, but anyway, right in this hole we hack a wall. Just by doing one wall you will avoid the liquor. You will avoid the body the body block from the liquor, to be exact. But it's better to hack the right wall because the left wall is like very close to the other wall, if you know what I mean. Like, you can get close to the chairs. But anyway, right here, hack this wall. 
always rotate like make that that circle and you will always dodge that acid speed from the ivy zombie it's very very consistent by the way like I, I always try to find consistent strats for my runs even if like 100% consistent strats and if I, I'm not able to find 100% consistent strats, at least I find 90 or 80% consistent strats. Because you know the main reason of my video is that you can replicate these runs and do it by yourself. By yourselves. And believe me when I tell you that everyone can do these runs. You just need to believe in yourself and practice a lot. Practice is the key. So remember the box that we, that we push, we can now use it because the door that it's on this specific section, section it's open, it opens with the key that we retrieved in the laboratory. Very cool cutscene right now. Good girl. Now run, Sherry. Have you come and get it? I've got what you want. Come on. Here. This is what you're looking for, right? Fine. Then go get it. Sucker. Self-destruct sequence has been activated. Repeat. The self-destruct sequence has been activated. This sequence may not be aborted. All employees proceed to the emergency car at the bottom platform. So with common sense you will think that Mr. X is already dead because he just swim on lava like in liquid metal. But guess what? There's a cameo from Arnold Schwarzenegger of Terminator 2, so. The super tyrant is still alive and he. Sherry? Where are you? He born. Where is she? So right now we need to backtrack to the to the main part of the laboratory. That part where you put that freeze stuff to activate the bridges. Or to activate the power of the laboratory. So this is the main reason there's a lot of backtracking in the laboratory. In exchange of not so much backtracking in the RPD. In the B scenario. In the A scenario is the opposite. More backtracking in the RPD, less backtracking in the laboratory. Retrieve the master key, you can go to the, to the elevator and activate it there. So right now there are some very important things that you need to take into consideration. You need two acid rounds for the Mr. X, the Super Tyrant fight. Only two acid rounds. It's important that it has to be acid rounds. And you need 11 explosive rounds. But because I only have 8, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> but the strat is with 11 explosive rounds. And if you have any other kind of, of grenades, 
And I'm talking about G5 boss fight, for, uh, by the way. Uh, you need to help. Like, if you want to do it with flame rounds or acid rounds, you need to help. But if you combine explosive rounds with other kind of grenades, you need 11 as well. As long as you have more than explosive rounds than the other one, it, it's 11. Oh, I have three. Yeah, that's completely fine. So I have 11 in total because I have eight explosive rounds and I have three flame rounds. So that's super cool. So right here, remember that you need two, two item slots to, to pick up the plugs. But yeah, I have like the exact amount of ammunition. And this is one of, of the main reasons why Clear B scenario is like the most complex run in, in all of the four runs on hard difficulty. It's because of these kind of things. Like the ammunition is very, very low. And sometimes you won't have enough ammunition in the entire game. And I even pick up all the ammunition in the game. Almost every ammunition. So the strat for the Super Titan is very, very consistent, by the way. As long as you move correctly and go to the spots that I will tell you. It's 100% consistent. And shoutouts to Matt the Rock who find out this strat, by the way. He tell me about this strat. So go to the plugs, equip the grenade launcher with, with acid round, sorry, and use one plug. So the cutscene ends, press the up and left deeper button and run. You will always avoid that auto attack just by doing that. And stand up right in this corner. When Mr. X appears in the camera, shoot two times and then release the aiming. And Ada will throw you the rocket launcher and then do the same again as, as at the beginning of the game. Press the up and left deeper button and run and you will avoid that auto attack from Mr. X. Equip the rocket launcher, aim and shoot. You lose, big guy. So the main reason you can avoid those auto attacks of Mr. X is because Mr. X will always attack with his left arm when he does that charge animation. So just by going to his right side, you will avoid the auto attack. So it's 100% consistent and Ada will always throw you the rocket launcher after the second acid round. Do not think it's RNG. So right here I will just pick up the handgun and the handgun bullets. So I will equip the explosive rounds to my grenade launcher. So I will have a space for the handgun bullets. Because there are some zombies before we can go to the last boss fight. So the handgun and the bowgun are the best weapons you can have. Because remember you need 11 grenades for this fight. Or 12 if you are not using explosive rounds. So what I do is just start aiming, try to quick shot. By any chance I can have a crit shot, will be cool. But if I don't have a crit shot, it's okay because I have the bowgun. Then when I deplete all my handgun bullets on my clip, I go to this corner, equip the handgun again, like reload the handgun, sorry, and then continue shooting. If you are out of handgun bullets, that's very strange that it can happen. Use the bowgun. But if a zombie is very close to you, use Bogan. Like 100% of the time. Do not hesitate. Otherwise, the zombie can launch to your feet. And imagine losing no damage run just because of that. So I use the auto aim in order to know if a zombie is still alive. If the auto aim continue rotate me, it means that a zombie is still alive. But the auto aim is not rotating my character, so all the zombies are dead. So you can go and continue. So there's one cutscene before the last boss fight, by the way. 
the strat for the last boss fight is very different than on normal difficulty, so it can hit you very easily if you don't perform it correctly. Hazardous outbreak imminent. The emergency system has been activated. This train will detonate. Repeat, this train will detonate. No! What's wrong with this thing? I don't know. The door won't open. The strat goes like this after the cat team equip the rocket launcher aim and shoot immediately as soon as you can, as soon as you regain control of your character. Just aim and shoot, then enter to your menu again, equip the grenade launcher and then get get close to the G, to G5 to his left. And when you kinda clip to him, just start shooting. You have to be very very close to him and to his left so his tentacles won't be able to hit you. As you can see you are like on the side of the tentacles after you are out of Explosive rounds, equip your flame rounds or acid rounds, it doesn't matter. But as you can see, it's 11 and G5 is done. The main reason with explosive rounds is one grenade less than with the other ones. It's because explosive rounds uh, kind of work the same like the shotgun. It deals more damage when you are very close to the enemy. So that's why it's 11 explosive rounds or 12 flame rounds or 12 acid rounds. And if you combine, it's 11 as well. But that's the main strat, and that's, that's G5, and yeah, that's it. Like, the main goal for this boss fight is that you have to go to his left and be being very, very close to him. So the tentacles won't hit you when they appear. Sherry, 
What are you doing? We have to stop the train, right? I can do Sherry! it. Sherry! Persistent, aren't you? Well, come and get it! Right switch. Maybe this one? Sherry! Claire! Ah! <sighs> I can't hold on much longer. Push the switch over there! Got it! Oh. Finally. Are you okay, Sherry? I'm okay. Where's Leon? Leon? Leon! Right here. Leon! You're both safe. Just die. We've got to get out of here. Move it! Go! That was a close one. That was pretty impressive back there, Sherry. It was nothing. I saw someone do that on TV once. Come on, we've got to move out. Now what's the problem? Is something following us? Hey, we still have a job to do. Let's go. Go? Oh, you can't mean. Chris, I have to find you. So. This was Resident Evil 2 Classic, no save, no damage, on hard difficulty. Also, unclear B scenario. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you like, hope you enjoy, hope you learn. You can find me on twitch.tv or and on all my other socials like Twitter, Instagram. It will be down in the description below. Also, I have a, another channel where I upload these runs with Spanish commentary, so maybe there's a Spanish speaker watching me right now. You can go and watch that out. I explain all the strats in Spanish. But yeah, if you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can find all my non damage runs in this channel as well. I do like almost every Resident Evil game and some other games as well. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care. I'm Aris, and I see you next time.